welcome back to another episode of Oko, a Pokemon VGC podcast. And I see just around the corner, and if you are attending, you might even be listening to this on your travel there. Hopefully it is good. If not, and you're at home or listening to it any other time, I still hope you're having a great day. My name is Sierra Dawn, and I am joined here by my co-host, Joe Brown. We're sadly not going to be at NAIC this weekend, but it means that we get to relax and chill and watch NAIC, which is kind of also nice. Yeah, honestly, I'm a little, you know, a little bummed. It's always like a pros and cons, right? A little bummed not to be in New Orleans with all our friends and experiencing the gumbo and the beignets, beignet, beignets whatever they're called, uh, and the jazz music or whatever. But at least we get to watch from home in a normal uh, time zone. It's not like, uh, you know, six hours ahead of us or, or whatever. So just wake up at 9 a.m. on Friday and uh, and enjoy the IC. Yeah, I mean, I heard it's pretty humid down there. Um, I heard on a scale of normal humid to uh, Yokohama humid is about seven. Um, <laughs> so I'm kind of okay with skipping out on it, but it's going to be uh, just okay. But uh, yeah, there is a special event, of course, over the past weekend that we got to chat about. And I forgot before we actually get into this. Hopefully you have short travels to NISC if you're listening to this on your travel too. Because this will be a little bit of a shorter episode. I am sick and probably then also a good thing that I wasn't planning on going to NAIC. And it is late, so this one's probably going to be a little bit of a shorter episode than usual. So I do apologize for that one. I'm, my, my bad. My bad. Yeah, well, and as everybody can see in here, I have a different background. I have a different audio. It's It's been an ordeal tonight trying to get this podcast set up i've been having internet issues and computer issues and stuff so we're just gonna give you a short and sweet oko back to the olden days no more uh no two-hour podcast this week no you know you know what you could do though to help with like the get some like good mojo in your different place listening to she's a rainbow by the rolling stones in the podcast (laughs) you did talk you did talk about this i saw it in the discord so like are you a fan in general of the rolling stones or like how did you come across this because i'm a big stones fan my mom is a huge rolling stones fan so i grew up listening to them and the beatles and you know all the other uh the who and whatnot uh so how how did you just like kind of just find this song um so have you heard of the show ted lasso yes (laughs) (laughs) awesome show um have you watched it I I have not because that's an Apple TV vehicle, right? And I don't I don't have Apple TV, so I haven't watched it. Worth it to describe. You, I think you can get a trial for seven days. It's three seasons. You can get through it. But um, they use this song. It's actually probably the best episode in the entire series. Um, because of the moment that they have this song, they do the whole song, the whole scene. They don't even change the song. Like they keep like they actually build the whole scene out around it. It's Oh wow! It's, okay. it's it's very very good, and like it's definitely one of those ones where it kind of hits a little different if you watch like through the series and kind of understand the emotionalness behind it. But um, yeah, absolutely awesome scene. And then I was like, oh man, the song stuck in my head. And then I was very pleasantly surprised to learn that the song was unchanged in the scene. Um, so I could actually just listen to the proper song instead of watching the scene. So yeah, it's um. Yeah, I've been listening to it for probably the last four hours. Um, I, love, I love that, honestly. Yeah. It's it's yeah. different. It's not like you're listening to, like, you know, start, like, you didn't just discover Start Me Up or, like, another famous Rolling Stones <laughs> song. You're like, wow, you guys ever hear this? Like, yeah, where you been for 50 years, Sierra? But, over 55. Yeah. I think it's been, like, 57 <laughs> years since this song released. I had, a, I had a mental breakdown after, like, watching that like seeing that like it was glad that we had this song but uh i do i do know daz has been daz has been begging me to watch ted lasso but my response because i told him to watch cowboy bebop like five and a half years ago that i'll watch i will watch ted lasso when daz watches cowboy bebop i think that's a fair trade you're starving yourself out of an amazing show genuinely like it's i've actually... heard great things i'm just saying he told me he would watch cowboy bebop and it's been like five years and he hasn't done it I, you're just you're just robbing yourself like that's none of my business you are just actively robbing yourself but when you finally decide to watch it and you get to the scene that has this song it'll click it'll all click and you'll understand <laughs> absolutely everything it's the best scene i even watched the scene like four times tonight as well but um it's a pokemon podcast on tell us true 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 it is, it is, I, I could go on about this show and the scene for absolute ages, um, but no, there is a special event that happened over the weekend, um, 
and that is the last big event of the season before NAIC, um, technically. So that's that's something. Yeah, it's the uh, Bologna special event, which I, uh, I, I kind of messed up during the NAIC pre-show, uh, and in one we of my. No, 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 worse. I pretended that it had happened already. So I was covering the players to watch and stuff, and one of them was a Latin American player, and I was like, oh, you know, he top eight at the Buenos Aires event, and he won, uh, or he, he won this special event, and then he top eight at this, and he got top 32 at EUIC. And then I said, oh, he also got top eight at Bologna, <laughs> Bologna which hadn't happened at that point. I meant uh, Sao Paulo regionals. I don't know why I thought Bologna – had happened and I mixed Sao Paulo and those uh, together. I wish I was just silly enough saying baloney uh, in, instead, but no, I had the completely wrong event that hadn't even happened yet. And then I also was uh, being silly. Uh, and I said that I said, I said, Caridon and Tarapagos had only one special event at that point, not um, regionals, which is true. Because that's what I thought in my head. But what I said out loud was Muridon and Tarapagos. I didn't realize that I meant Coridon. Um, so I I, just, I had a little bit of a silly moment. But yes, anyway, Bogota finally happens. The Latin American player, I said, didn't top eight the event because he wasn't there. But it <laughs> that was... That would have been really funny, though, honestly. Like, that would have been like a, what the hell, is he a prophet type moment, you know? Yeah, but I honestly, I think it's been like a real it, it's more than the restricteds this event was about Clefairy. i saw everybody tweeting about cowars Cal- Clefairy teams uh 29 percent of day two players had Clefairy in their on their team like so there were there were three in top eight so that's a really good uh use of, you know percentage there was there was well. actually only two Clefairy. But I looked at two, it wrong. Two scream tail as well. <laughs> they're all so, si- they're all tiny and pink, you know. I so. it, I did a double take too. I actually the entire time you're like talking, I've just been looking back and like how many Clefairy, how many scream tail. Like I don't want to mess this up. Yeah, but uh, Clefairy won, so that's the more important one, arguably. Right. So shout outs to uh, to Ruben and their uh, Cowrex Shadow Rider Clefairy team, and I think. Uh, anybody who didn't have a Clefairy answer, like people were like, tweeting about like um, like Duraladon <laughs> with Stalwart, <laughs> like uh, what's his name, the uh, the Gen Eight uh, Water Starter with the his ability that can't be redirected. Um, oh my God, why am I blanking on the uh, Water Star- Sobble's evolution? Inteleon? Inteleon, yeah. Like that's how down bad people are because their Clefairy matchups are that bad that you might have to break out Inteleon just to fix it. All right. Well, I, I'd love to see Inteleon get... How many players are at NAIC? I have no idea, honestly. Probably, like, what, 900 or maybe 1,000? I can't wait to see it get, like, 899th place at <laughs> NAIC. That ain't, that ain't the wave. But, um, yeah, you're talking about Ruben having the Clefairy on his team. It's not just the Clefairy. So the four that um, Ruben ended up bringing, we had a back-to-back win here for Calyrex Shadow Rider, taking out the special event here. Paired with Rillaboom, Chi Yu... A fairy, Tornadus, and Mien Shao, which was interestingly enough, one of those Pokemon that was put into the builder for theory testing before Reg G even started, and then it never went anywhere. And now all of a sudden it just comes out of the woodwork to win a special event and actually seeing like it's a pretty good like usage for it, which is crazy. Yeah, I mean, this was kind of the spot that people were predicting me and Chow to go on, right? It was supposed to be there to counter spread attacks, mainly at the time when everyone was uh, at the beginning of the format worried about Caloric Shadow. Uh, and then you put it the same way that's just how VGC works. You put uh, you put the same threat that me and Chow is there to counter on your same team. So you have your own Caloric Shadow Rider that if they don't have wide guard and you do, you just you know, instantly win that, uh, win that Astro Barrage mirror match. And I think it is cool that me and Chow took, like, it, it finally had its moment because it was one of the, as you mentioned, like, just like Pelipper and just like Clefairy and just like some of these other, you know, Whimsicott, like Pokemon that everybody had theorized at the beginning of the format, like these support Pokemon are going to help facilitate, you know, your restricted, uh, uh, game plan. And then it kind of just was in the shadows for a month or whatever. So I do like that Mian Chow has come back because people are going to have to be prepared for Mian Chow and AIC. This top eight is just like wacky all across the board. We also got a Kyogre 
um, making the top eight here with Serena, Iron Jugulus. And of course, already talked about the fact that there's two Screamtails in the top eight. Iron Hands made second. Um, and a Dragapult made the top eight to Katie's Delight with a yeah. Pompey on the team as well. Like this is this is everywhere. Oh, and a um and a thunderous, um Sunday Eye in top four. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of all over the place, but you can at least see the um, you can understand the origin points, I guess, of some of these decisions. For example, like that Dragapult Comfey team. It's like, well, you have Comfey with Rillaboom with Grassy Terrain. You get the boosted, excuse me, the boosted healing uh, from Comfey, and you want to be healing that Calm Mind Terrapagos that uh, Alessio was using in that spot. But then, even even the Thunderous, it's like, okay. Uh, Rage Bolt, Rage Bolt, kind of a pain. At least, it, at least Thunder is just a neutral hit into it. So you know you're not going to get uh, one shot by a Raging Bolt or something. But really, it's that it's that prankster eerie impulse on Raging Bolt, on say Tarapagos, on Lunala, on uh, Kyrex Shadow Rider, like uh, even Kyogre. Right? I mean, sure, maybe you just want to hit it with a Thunderbolt. But uh, yeah. there's <laughs> there's so many special attackers excuse me in this format that like even when i've been testing on showdown i'm just like geez like i really need i wish i could have two assault vests on, on my <laughs> team so I might, i've just been putting ting lu and an av mon like in the builder oh no the ting lewis he's been coming out of my calrex uh, ice rider teams i've just been throwing uh ting lu out there I definitely do not envy those who have to build for NASC right now with how kind of the format has been going. So taking a look down at like top 10 Pokemon, talking about the restricteds first. First off, Cali Shadow went from 11% usage on day one to 30% on day two, which is an insane conversion rate. And there's also Lunala popping up in usage. Um, We get the Maridon kind of dropping a little bit zamazenta drops a little bit like this is this is crazy i still can't believe just like lunala and the cali shadow socks going up yeah i think lunala i think a lot of people had their eyes open to lunala in the i want to say it was on stream three times total in la like three three players had a lunala and maybe people just hadn't experienced it yet like maybe they're too busy building with Maradon and Karadon and you know the uh, the two forms of Calyrex and they're just like trying out all these like fun uh strategies that they hadn't really understood why Lunala is really good and the Shadow Shield is pretty much just like a it's like a certified you will not get knocked out in one hit <laughs> ability yeah. so uh I I'm not surprised to see Lunala moving up to 10% usage on on day 2 I do I do like that number that uh, day one, it was three and a half percent, and day two, it went up to ten percent. Now, obviously, there's a much smaller pool in day two, but that does, <coughs> excuse me, that does show that Lunala is like the good players are understanding it's good. Yeah, unfortunately, didn't do like quite as like the run as maybe you would have liked. So I'm curious about how it goes going on forward because like looking at the Lunala teams that made it, they're kind of all over the place in terms of how they're building around. Um, Javier um, Corrales has Lunala, Cornerstone Ogre Pond, um, um, Dark um, Urshifu, um, Single Strike, the Incineroar, an Ursaluna, regular one, and then Don Dozo. <clears throat> like, this doesn't seem like kind of like a standard Lunala thing. Like, normally when we see like a rise in usage of a Pokemon, I normally like, we kind of just start to see an archetype coming out. Um, in general, but even then, yeah, that got 20th place. 23rd, we get another Lunala, which is Lunala, Rilla, Rapid Urshi, Chien Pao, Dragonite, Ditto. Yeah, that's kind of a, that's a crazy. This is, like, it's <laughs> crazy. Next Lunala, at 36th place, Lunala, Rilla, Chi Yu, Single Striker Shifu, Tornadus, guess the sixth Pokemon. Okay, hold on. Start again. I'm closing my eyes. I'm not. Okay. I'm not looking at my screen. Lunala, Rillaboom, Chiyu, Single Striker Shifu, Tornadus. <laughs> PayPal you twenty bucks right now. If no cheating, you guessed the. Six. I mean, we can literally see my eyes are closed. Sixth Mon, 
I'm going to say like Ogre Pond Wellspring. I don't know. That was a trash guess. Why would I be so like, oh my god? Well, about you haven't seen that. it forever. No, All right, let me try again. Let me try again. Let me try again. Yeah, come trash on. guess. Trash guess. Imagine if it was Dugong. Wouldn't that be hype? That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> I give up. I give up. Root Bonnet. Never. You could have given me 400 guesses. I would. I know, right? Would That's why I'm like, now bonnet. you understand why I'm like, you're guessing Wellspring Ogre Pond? It's a Brute is that Bonnet. A, is that a triple dark team? Yeah, Urshifu, right? Uh, Chiyu and Brute Bonnet. Yeah. That's, yep. <laughs> that's With Rocky just Helmet. Like... And it got, it got, it got 30, uh, 36 plays. So, yeah, you can see when we're talking about like the Lunala not quite having an archetype and being everywhere. That's kind of like the curious like part of the team. I'm curious if we'll see a little bit more out of it in kind of a more standard way with NIC. Or if like Lunala is truly the hey, I am an off the wall team builder and I'm gonna cook type Pokemon. So I'll always see like some weird wacky stuff. I'm here for it though. I do yeah, I do think it is a Pokemon that it can fill it seems it's like almost kind of opposite of most restricteds that like you put Lunal on the team at the end and fill what you're missing. So like, do you need another trick room setter? Do you need a wide guard user? Do you need another strong special attacker in the end? Right? Like you kind of put the regular Pokemon in place first because like just even the t the twentieth and twenty third uh lunalis on the two like one is a safety goggles wide guard trick room version uh on javier's end and then giacomo's one with the dragonite team is uh it's power herb and meteor beam he's trying to do damage right so like i do think lunala is one of those flexible pokemon that like when we get to that sec that double restricted spot it is going to be a very good uh, second oh, yeah. restricted on a team. I don't know if it's going to win NAIC this weekend, but at least people are aware that it's good. Yeah, I think this Pokemon in double restricted is going to be cooking. Um, last oh, thing that also, I, wanted... I think there's, sorry, real quick, yeah. uh, if we go top 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I'm, I'm cheating because I'm going top 17, 9 of the top 17 have a Clefairy. That's crazy. But, like, also, when you have this string of um, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all being Cali Shadow with Clefairy, <laughs> checks out. Yeah, Makes yeah. Um, I think one of the interesting meta development things, um, moving along this so we can get to our NASC in due time before my throat, uh, like, yeah, my yeah, voice yeah. completely give out. Um was the regular Pokemon um, top 12. Because something that we talked about a lot at LA was the rise of Whimsicott as another Prankster Tailwind Pokemon, all of this stuff. Doesn't even make the graphic for day two. Right. We see Tornado stocks go up. And just the conversion rate in general. I mean, Incineroar, it's still at almost 50% usage. Like, don't get me wrong. But it actually got passed by Rillaboom. That went from 33% to 50.7, making first on the chart, which is not the development I expected to see. But logically, considering how well it matches up into things like Cali Shadow, it's an assault vest Pokemon, you got priority or fake out. Like, it, it makes sense. Yeah, the 50% is is crazy. I mean, especially because, like, I know, uh, I know Incineroar and Rubem dropped from... Uh, Indy to LA, the issues like Incineroar was seventy percent and went back down to like forty three. Uh, but to go up to nearly, you know, Incineroar staying on half the teams, but then Real Boom going on to essentially half of the teams in in day two, it just shows like one, it's anti Maridon because you said Grassy Terrain to get rid of Electric Terrain. It's anti Kyogre. It's really one of the best ways to beat Kyogre because Grassy uh, Grassy Glide means that power water spout's not going to be at full power. Like there's just there's uh, Fake Out helps you set up Calm Mind on Tropagos or Lunala. Like there's just so many things that Rillaboom does well that you, you kind of have to have a reason not to use it. And then like even if your reason is I already have a Grass type, I already have a Moongus, or I already have an Ogre an Ogre Pop form. Like just run both at this point because Ogre Pop or it's because Rillaboom is that good but what's actually funny here is uh one of my friends was built one of my tc friends was building out his uh his nasc fantasy team thing i don't know if you've done that on the website yet i have um, not you should you should lock that in because like first place gets like like i think it's like multiple booster boxes and like all these other things um 
And so he locked, so he locked in uh, when I was helping him out and he locked in in, in Cinderella or she as the top three, like, cause they're all different categories. Right. And then Tornadus. And then for the Kitakami decks, I did Clefairy. So uh, those were like five of the six. And then his uh, restricted was, uh, was, it was Coward Shadow Rider. And then, so all, I sent him the day two top twelve in uh, in Bologna, um, and I sent him that graphic, and I said, "Look at this!" And Shadow Rider won the event, and he was like, "I'm golden! Like he's just gonna have the highest usage. He's gonna win everything!" Like yes. you know, I definitely do have to fill that out. I didn't even I didn't look at it last NAIC because it was off limit to Canadians, so I didn't oh, even. I think you could do it this year. I think so. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was just like, eh, I haven't bothered. But I, I will look into it actually seriously now. Um, another thing with the top 12 usage, um, Chan Pao doesn't make the graphic for either day. It's a it's a Chiyu world. We're just looking yeah. at it to Jody's celebrating right now. <laughs> yeah, people are celebrating, uh, you know, 90% of the time when their their heat waves miss and the other 10% when it's a, a double a double miss on a one HP Pokemon. You don't celebrate as often, but yeah, I still think Chi or excuse me, I still think Chien Pao is a phenomenal Pokemon. I, I understand why it's not uh it's not like staying high usage one because there's so much fake out. It's just on the graphic, right? You have Rillaboom, Incineroar, um, me and get fake out. I'm pretty sure it does, right? And then Iron Hands as well, right? So there's so much fake out. There's so much redirection with the, with Cornerstone and Clefairy and some of these other things that like, well, if I want to hit my Mar- if I want to hit Maradon or or hit Calyrex or whatever, well, it's just gonna get redirected anyway. So I can understand why people are dropping. Chien Pao and just clicking Heat Wave with with Chiu because you don't yeah. care about redirection, but I still think Chien Pao is really strong. I I don't know. I I have a love hate relationship with Chien Pao. Like sometimes I'm just like, man, this mon is so strong. And other times I'm like, this is the biggest fraud. You always know what the <laughs> almost always know what the four moves are going to be. You have to like you almost always have to click protect first turn because there's a fake out, and if you get that turn wrong, well then you're absolutely toast. It has to have the focus. Sash on your team like it's just I don't know I just I don't know I'm I'm okay with this development let people miss their heat waves against me I'm okay <laughs> yeah I guess so I mean Chiyu has really been I would say the biggest surprise because I have thought Clefairy is a great Pokemon for a long time and I know chiyu has been up and down to use his like how much Chiyu has risen over the last month of Regulation G has probably been the most surprising thing to me I guess also like on the restricted end would have been Zamazenta just because I didn't practice Zamazenta at all. So we saw it in, uh, you know, working with body press or whatever. Did you see actually in ninth place, Michael? Oh Kelsch, yeah. He missed top, he missed top cut. Right. But he's got that, you know, that, that Michael Zhang, you know, Ladio Zamazenta team, but Galarian and Moltres got, it got kicked off the squad. What happened? Bad Vaughn. But Shadow I... Riders everywhere. No, I, I think, like, I think it was, I think it was maybe Chance Hines that got to play it before Reg G started, and, like, Chance then swapped to, like, the Lunala comp that was, like, protect the president, no, sorry, the Lugia, protect the president, Mm -hmm. with the same pieces, but before it was Galarian Moltres, and Chance had an incredible run at the regional, but, like, watching, like, how much effort you had to put into keeping this Galarian Moltres around, and seeing it not pick up KOs, I'm just like, Nope, you will never sell me on this Pokemon. And then when it started popping up for Zamazenta teams, I was just like, this is a bad Pokemon. Why are they using it? And I just, I could never really like wrap my head around it because I always thought there could be better. So honestly, congratulations, my Felsh. Like you've, you've, cra- <laughs> you've cracked it. But um, congratulations, not- Pelipper. You have, <laughs> you know, I mean, we're also then adding a Pokemon onto the team that I think Wide Guard is just. If you're eyeing up the Galarian Moltres that doesn't take KOs, I think a kind of uh, like speed tier, even if it has good yeah. resist, you could also have a Pelipper that helps your partner Pokemon, you know? And Pelipper does a pretty decent amount of damage. And even if like people are like, okay, well, I'm going to double into the Pelly this turn or whatnot, being able to have the helping hand to be like, okay, well, this is still going to be dangerous because you're going to bop by whatever's next to you. I think, I think it's so nice, especially synergies with the team. Being able to, like, because you have Terra Grass on the Zamazenta, um, yeah. all of a sudden you're setting the rain, you're not getting hit by fire attacks, you have Urshi Water, um, like, 
surging strikes and like i just i just i like this so much better i think it's a shame that he didn't quite squeak into cut but like i i like this i do not like the Valerian yeah. moltres i like this yeah i think the biggest factor one or shifu with Pel- pelipper it makes it so much stronger but you now have double wide guard. So essentially, as long as Pelipper or Zamazenta are on your group of four, like you always have wide guard available. And now Zamazenta doesn't have to press it. It doesn't have to stop hitting body press, essentially. If Pelipper's on the field with it, it can continue to body press while Pelipper keeps it safe. So I like, I do like the double wide guard, you know, switch up here. Yeah, and being able to go have that flexibility too, I think it kind of makes your opponent's decision making a little bit more difficult because it's no longer like, oh, does the Zamazenta wide guard? Like, it's just like, it's all of a sudden, oh, can the Zamazenta or will it be the Pelipper? Like, which one do you respect? Which one's attacking? Which isn't? And I think that makes things just a lot more difficult to cross the board. But um, anything else you want to talk about just about the special event or we should be getting to NAIC at chat? Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing else about this. I did just want to mention Japan that I wasn't, I wasn't watching. I know Joe Ugarte was streaming and other people were like super zoned in on assault vest, crunch, cower, X ice rider, and all the other silly best of one strats that maybe have an influence. Uh, maybe people run crunch instead of stomping tantrum or something like that on their ice riders. But I just, I just wanted to mention that that happened. Congrats to all those Japanese players that are going to be making their way to Honolulu and Tarapagos won that event. So yes, we know it's best of one. It's not the same environment, yada, yada, yada. But once you get to Top Gun, it is best of three in this Tarapagos, um, Ogre Pond, Hearth Flame kind of team is uh, Hugh Mahara ended up winning the event. So, you know, congrats. I wish I got to watch it. I just was, yeah, I was messaged all the time about like some crazy stuff that was happening, but that might be one yeah, that blizzard, I have to... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, snow, the blizzard. Snowscape uh, Tornadus and then Blizzard yeah. Kyogre. I'm like, man, I love Japan. Yo, if I if I was playing a closed team sheet best of one and somebody rolled up and clicked Snowscape Blizzard Kyogre in front of me, I, I, <laughs> I think I would just leave the tour. I, I think I that's think a I'm fair done. reaction. Yeah, I, what else do you do in that situation? Like, I, I don't think there's anything left. You, you, you run from the match next turn. You just silently disconnect yourself from the tournament. You never speak of it again. Nobody has to know. <laughs> oh, my switch got fried. I can't, I can't play anymore. Like, you're, your bad. friends ask why you left. My switch accidentally just got thrown onto the highway. <laughs> um, tragic, frankly. Um, could, couldn't imagine. Um, yeah, but that was my it, only other note besides NAIC. That's fair. Before we can talk about NAIC, um, I opened up Discord to a message that is, um, speaking of people getting, like, things getting flattened on the highway, just watched Joe almost get selected by God to be flattened by a pickup truck. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> so, um, Joe Garty's in New Orleans right now and apparently having a great time with it. So, uh, Are there raising canes in, uh, in yes, New Orleans? Yes, he's already eaten there. Okay, good. Yeah, That's I think there's one down the, like, down the street from the convention center. So um, I get to have some good FOMO right now, but at least I'm not getting run over by a pickup truck. But um, That's fair. NAIC, it is this weekend. Um, it feels weird to sit out from because normally I try to go to NAIC if I'm not casting, but made the decision to watch party and said this weekend. Um, but yeah, New Orleans, I think that'll be a lot of a lot of fun. Like it'll be busy, but it'll be it'll be a good time. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm obviously conflicted, right? Because I would love to go. I don't really, I didn't want to like fly if, if I'm not working the event, and find a hotel, and so I'm sure I could have room with people, made it cheaper, right? I just didn't feel, yeah, I feel like I'd rather help from home and watch from home and stuff, but I'm conflicted because New Orleans has been my answer for a decade for where do you want a Pokemon event, where do you want a world's level, international level event, and I've said New Orleans, so I am a little bummed that I'm missing out when like my idea has is being fully realized like in front of me without me but i'm still gonna be excited to watch yeah it was it's tough making those decisions like i guess it turns out as it be that i'm sick anyway so it's probably a good it's good that i'm not able to go but like flights coming out from canada were like a grand like that's not even including hotels like right. it's a lot of money like it's really really is especially too for other people that are like competing finishing off world's invites like that have a chance at making icy money like that's all cool and dandy i was about to roll up to new orleans to play slitherwing like i'm not <laughs> making money i'm not getting a world's invite 
so what the heck am I doing here other than having a great time? But if I'm going all my prep into like, I don't know, it's just, it didn't, yeah. it didn't make sense on paper. Like I did originally plan to go play, but uh, yeah, well, so there wings reserved for winning another event. I mean, uh, of all the cities to just go and have fun in, New Orleans is definitely up there to be one of those cities in the country. For but a thousand I, I dollar you. round I know, flight, tough. it's tough. like nah. If it was, if it was like around like the five hundred mark, like I probably would have cracked. But yeah. I was sitting there, and it's just like I can't, I can't justify it as much as I want to. Like I. I shouldn't have gone to Japan last year for Worlds, and I did, despite the flight price, and I regretted it. And, like, when I was making the decision, I just had that echoing in my head. Like, right. you know, like, you've done the FOMO book a trip, and it wasn't that great. Don't do it. But uh, enough about that. There is a competition, and this is, of course, going to be the final competition of Regulation G before we get into the World Championships. And, again, I said this earlier, I'll say it again. I do not envy people trying to prep and figure out what they have to bring for this event yeah definitely because not only is it like as i like uh you know scarzik and rachel asked me on the on the pre-show is like do you break out do you break out the call right do you go for the big play here at naic or do you try to save that for worlds and i told them like usually usually i can understand kind of playing it safe at NAIC if you think you have the call for Worlds. But since we have literally over two months, like I think what it ends June 9th and then Worlds starts like August 16th or something. So eight and a half weeks or something between uh, when people are going to get for leave New Orleans to get to Hawaii. I, I would not trust that if I have the secret sauce or the secret tech that it would be held secret for two months, one, yeah. and that nobody else would also come to that conclusion in the next two months of, of team building and, and preparation and stuff. So I think this yeah. is where you go boss to the wall. I think if you've been saving everything through all of May, you've been trying to keep your sad tragedy, you know, secret, whether that was the Clefairy or, you know, me and me and shot coming back, whatever it is. Like, uh, I think this is, I think this is where you break it out. No, I a hundred percent agree. Like, I think like LA, if you had like the sauce for NAIC, that's when you hold on to. But like you said, the break from NAIC to worlds is so big. I also think that this format has been very, like, turbulent so far. Like, we're constantly kind of switching up and adapting. And I think even if there is an official event with, like, grassroots and people testing, I still think there's actually going to be a fair little bit of innovation that's happening in that time before Worlds. So you could just very easily have a team that's just outdated by then. All of a sudden, you have, like, the call for this state of Regulation G. There is no promise that the world's regulation G is going to look anything similar to this. So, yeah, bring out the call now. Um, like, I'm sometimes okay with saving strats, but no, no, no. Like, that's a yeah. lot of money on the line. Like, there is like, there is still the potential. Like, if you're winning it, 500 points, if you already had your invite, you already had that 500 points, that's all of a sudden putting you in the top eight. Um, we're looking at stipends. We're looking at Yeah, we, we see how close NA is, like, besides Riley at this point for those yeah. top eight spots. So, yeah. Uh, all right, let's get started, Sierra, with our, our NAIC prediction, the most important predictions right. of the year to date. We're going to first question, just a softball, get the conversation rolling. Day one, top usage restricted. So you don't have to give a number, just which restricted Pokemon do you think will be number one in day one usage? I mean... It sounds like recency bias, but considering like the conversion rate and everything else, I think I have to say Cali Shadow on this one. I think that finally the meta is letting it be in a spot where it is kind of that really, really strong team that it was thought to be before the format started. And I think with its recent results, even people that are going to NAIC, because we're talking, we said day one, right? Correct. Day one. Yep. I think it's going to be a pretty easy team for people who don't know what they want to bring to pick up and i still think it's going to be just a really really strong team in general so you're gonna have the more competitive top players and the more casual i'm just gonna have a good time but if i can make a grand it's gonna be it's gonna be good so i think cali shadow i think that's a fair guess i'm just trying to look i'm, I'm also updating our our notes as we as we write them so it's easier okay. to remember uh later on looking at la because obviously we had bologna this weekend where uh, day one, Maridon was first. It was Maridon, Ice Rider, and then Shadow Rider, but they're all literally within half a percentage yeah. 
of each other. So it's not really that big of a difference. And then day two, it skyrockets to Shadow Rider being number one. And then in uh, LA as well, it was Maridon, Ice Rider, Tarapago, Zamazenta, Karidon, then Shadow Rider. So just off of that precedent, I'm thinking people really do like just clicking choice specs, volt switch, Terra Electric volt switch on uh, on Maridon. So I'll go with Maridon for my answer. See, like with the more and more Rillaboom that's coming out, like I don't know. I feel I think like Maridon will take like a third place on day one usage. I think I think we'll I see a little you. bit of a switch up here. <clears throat> All right, question number two is just like the first one, but we're just changing the date. So top or day two top usage restricted. So you said Shadow Rider. I said Maridon. Do you think it converts? Do you think something takes over on their spot? Because I do, I do have a, I do think I, I have a different answer for for this one at least. I'll let you go first. Then I think I need another second. Okay, I think it's finally time for Ice Rider. I know it like one one small uh, special event or something, and it hasn't won the hasn't done as well as we wanted at the regionals. And people are calling it a fraud and everything. But there's just something there's just something about Calrex Ice Rider to me. I think it's a really strong Pokemon. I think Glacial Lance is busted. I think. There's really good supportive trick room Pokemon one and like tools to make Ice Rider work. I think, excuse me, the the continued growth of Clefairy in the meta is good for Ice Rider uh, because that gives you like another supportive slow Pokemon that you maybe you sing something or <laughs> or whatever. Uh, so uh, uh, even if I think Maridon's number one in day one, I think the conversion, the good the good players that make it. To day two of NASC, I'm going with uh, Carax Ice Rider. Okay, okay. I feel like that is the like that is. It was between the horses on which one that I would go to for my answer, but since you picked the Ice Rider, that kind of makes it easy. Er, I I feel bad picking the same one. No, I it's, don't it's think smart. it's going to be. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be thirty percent number one i think it might be a little bit more close between them um i think it'll maybe stay in the 20 percent usage but i still think that it's gonna be on top or cali shadow to clarify for those who are tuning in and out cali shadow <coughs> now just usage. out of curiosity where do we think the rest of the restricted field like, is it going to be Terrapagos coming out like crazy that's going to be the third most used or is Zamazenta going to be third most used like what do you what do you think the rest of the restricted field is going to look like um I'm gonna say I think actually funny enough um this special event day two I think it'll actually mimic a lot of that um save the um with um with the Karidon above uh, actually I don't know um but basically Shadow Rider Ice Rider Terrapagos Maridon I think it'll be the top four of that in that order okay. I think beyond there it'd get pretty close um I could see it maybe being like a Kyogre Zamazenta Karidon Lunala Zashi and Groudon for the order yeah I would agree I would say I mean. Groudon and Zashin have one point four percent usage, so I think they just put every restricted that made day two on the uh, on the graphic. I think that might have been two people. Participation and, awards, yeah, baby. exactly. They, they made it <laughs> on there. I would definitely, I would definitely expect Lunala to be higher than both those two Kyogre, Zamazenta, Groudon as well. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of people are on the on the Calm Mind Terrapicos train, which is funny because that's what Jake. You know, Jake Muller started the format with like Combine Tropicos is the best. And then everyone went to just like regular choice specs and you only click Terra Sarsorm and have Sleep Talk as your other move. And then now we've kind of went back to Combine. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if Tropicos ends up uh, moving up in the spot. I mean, it could. I just, I don't know. I'm not sold. Like, I definitely think that it has the capabilities to win the event and to have a great like top eight showing and whatnot. I just don't know across the board um, if it's going to be adopted to like the, oh my gosh, top one. But I yeah. don't know. I feel like it might even be one that people need to cook with like a smidge longer to really unlock like the absolute broken um, Trapagos one for worlds or something. I think we're not quite there. I can see that. I think it's fair. All right. Question number three. 
Right. Now, for context, Clefairy had 29% usage in day two of uh, Bologna. So we're going to lower the bar just a little bit. Clefairy day two usage over under 27%. I think 29 might have been a little too high to start with. So over or under 27% usage for Clefairy. I think I'm pretty like half and half on this. I think it'll be really close. Um, so I can let you answer and I can just double just take advocate. The other. Like, that's fair. Yep. Listen, that's fair. I don't mind losing this one because there's no plushie on the line. It's only at Worlds is the plushie on the line. So if you just we, go. We have to run yeah. that back. If you just opposite man me on every answer, I'm, t- I'm okay with it because the only thing that I lose is my pride. I don't lose actually, you know, I don't lose a plushie out of this one. Uh, I'm over. I am definitely Clefairy pilled. I have been Clefairy pilled for a very long time. I think it is a phenomenal Pokemon, especially in restricted formats. Like the last week or so, when I've been team building, like I sent Gabby a team that was just kind of ridiculous. Uh, but like I kind of just start with Clefairy and then add five other Mons to it. So uh, like that pilled, okay. Yeah, I just think it is so good. I'm not, and I'm not even using Sing. I respect the ones that you Sing. You know, the one that won in Bologna had Sing, uh, but I have Helping Hand. In that slide, I've, I've been using uh, Follow Me, Moonblast, Helping Hand, Protect. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go over 27. Uh, percent I'll take the under. Um, realistically, I think this is going to be within two percent of 27. Whether that goes up to 29 or goes down to 25, I think it's gonna be insanely close. Um, so I'm okay saying under. I think it is ju- still a really, really strong Pokemon. It's just it'll all depend on the conversion rate of the Cali Shadow. Um, I don't really think the Clefairy stocks are going to have anything to do with Clefairy itself, really, at NAIC. It'll be, obviously, people are going to respect the Cali Shadow team going into this. It's just whether that respect has managing to put a stop to a couple of them horsing around. Nice. Horsing around. Respect. All right. Next question. Highest finishing Zashian. This is interesting because I think Zashian performed way better at LA than it did in Bologna. Kind of caught people off guard. I think it was up to like 7% of day two usage in LA, but down back to 1% uh, the next weekend. I think there is potential for the Pokemon, but like, are people going to have their world's invite, quote unquote, on the line with Zashin compared to other restricteds? That's where I'm kind of questioning. People put their world's invite and their world's runs on the line all the time with inaccurate moves. If the inaccurate move and, like, the archetype of the team is that strong, like, I think Zashian does offer, like, quite a bit of offensive pressure. It has a good speed. Um, And, like, the um, salves that it has hits pretty well into a lot of the things with the format. I mean, a play rough into all the Maridons out there, like, crazy. So, I definitely, I don't think it's going to be so widely picked up on that we'll see a huge spike in the usage. But I do think that the people who pick it up are going to go far with it. I would say we're going to see one in top eight, maybe even top four. So I guess my official wow. answer is I'll say top four. Wow, you're committing to top four? I, I'm, I'll give you eight if you want it, because I'm not going that high. If you'd rather. All right, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll take that buffer zone then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I, I, <laughs> I don't want to win off of technicality. You know, price yeah, is right. I'll, I'll officially lock in top eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that way, if they get top four, you're still correct. You so know, still but in, yeah. Not vice versa. Uh, I mean, I'm not as high on Like I said, I don't know how many people would rather. Like it depends on the the makeup of the field. If people are still trying to get their invites, or if people have already gotten in, they have the flexibility to miss play rough in half of their <laughs> rounds. So, uh, to me, I'll go top thirty two. I can definitely see it. I don't. I don't think it's going to be like the uh, that that Umbreon team that was really fun getting top four in uh, in LA. I don't think that's going to happen. But I, I would not be surprised if somebody got top thirty two. Thirty two. All right. And then do we like? buffer zone like so do you get like the 32 to the ninth slot then and i just like no uh i mean 32 to 16th because 16th would technically be the next like threshold so i guess how uh because it's tough because if we did top 64 that gives me such a huge thing there i i guess we just say if it is top 16 neither of us win okay. and then if it's not Top eight or higher, or exactly top thirty two. Because top, if I move yeah, it to sixty four, it's way too much. To seventeen, yeah, is like your range, and, and then minus top four, eight or eight higher. Eight through one, yeah. I think yeah. that's fair. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. 
All right, next question. How many Calyrex Shadow Rider will be in top eight? Three. Wow, that's a that's a big percentage. Damn, you, it you is. You're gonna lock it in? You said it. I'm kind of thinking it maybe should be two. Trying to see what happened in LA. We had two in LA, then Bologna this weekend. Oh man, I'm a big like proponent of like Was first two. thought, best thought. So it makes me like want to stick with the three because like go with your gut. I was so certain, you know, that's like a sign from Arceus, but like logic wise, like it just doesn't make sense. But I also get punished for not like following my gut because like and this is a little Valorant side tangent because I <laughs> host over tier two Valorant, our challenger scene. And we just had the craziest upset today. Blinn Esports, this collegiate team that made their way through our promotion relegation tournament, taking down M80, which is a very, like, well-known org that were thought to be, like, the next ones up in Tier 1, like, ascending. And Blinn Esports just 2 would them today. And we had to do our predictions for the week. And I looked at it, and the first thing I thought was, Blinn Esports wins that. And then I thought again, and I'm like, well, why would they? They're like the totally under favor, like they're the total underdogs, yourself. and like not even a way that's like a haha. They're the underdogs, but realistically, M80 should never lose this match. They should they should not lose this match, and it ended up being a really close series. Um, and they just swapped their IGL and a bunch of other things. And Blin played really really well, but I was like, they never lose this match. So I predicted M80, and I lost. Um, so the long story short, the first thought was his best the reaction was Blinny sports was going to win even if it like did not make sense um so i guess i'm going to lock in three long story short i'm going to lock in three because it's the first thing i thought logically i think it's probably going to be two the first thought best thought so i don't know i'm just doing it I, I i respect it um because like i also love in in to, to our other game tangent like in league of legends when they do the predictions and it's like oh it's gonna be three oh three oh three oh and or it's like oh it's gonna be three two or three one right because nobody wants to put three oh they don't want to be a jerk in the prediction so captain flowers the lcs caster he has a rule that anytime he does a prediction it has to be a three oh even if he doesn't believe like even if he thinks the team's not going to win three oh he has to put three oh so it looks confident in case it happens uh oh, and then God. uh jonah strom the uh he's in the lck the korean league um he he always just chooses the underdog 3-0 no matter what just because like if it actually did happen and he's the one person on the graphic you know like, with the man. thing it's like wow he's the greatest predictor ever but nobody would know just so you have the photo that if you just say 3-0 every single time you'll eventually get it right sometimes but go with your guy go with your guy i mean it it's as well like and like talking of those desks, because I think um I forget who it was in um um LCS that did this, but basically like you always have to have somebody that kind of like goes the opposite. If you have a desk that fully agrees, like even if it is like it's a curse, yeah. Well, not not even a curse. It's just boring. You really want four analysts to sit there and be like, "Oh, this team's gonna win." Yeah, sounds good right to me. Yeah, no contest. Okay, and they're just like you know, all thumbs up each <laughs> other and all like high five. Like you need to have somebody like have like be that like server and just kind of be like, yo, I don't know, guys. Like they can they can do this. Like there is like there is the possibility this other team could do this because it sparks the discussion, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, three Cali Shadow in day two. Um, and sorry, in top eight, <laughs> what do you think it's gonna be? Yeah, you know, well, since you went with your gut, I'm going to use my, I'm going to go with my brain and go with the two Ooh, that you yeah. left off. Uh, yeah. This is not, I, I would have said two anyway, just because as I've been looking at the regionals and the special events, like I did a lot of research for the preview show and like seeing all the top performing teams. It just seems inherently this regulation, we've had a lot of top cuts with four four restricteds and they're each on there twice like two tropicos two Coridon, two ice rider yeah. two shadow rider or something like that so it just seems like kind of thematic that it continues to happen in reg g so i'm gonna go with uh with two i think it's a smart answer i mean another reason <laughs> i didn't back down was because i knew that you wanted to pick it so you know, I'm, just, you know I'm being a good friend that's fair. I appreciate it. All right. Next question. This is, we don't usually do, this is question six. We have seven predictions. Usually we do five, but 
because this is NASC, the, the gravity of the situation is here. We're going to do seven questions. So question number six, which restricted will win NAIC? So this is this gives you more wiggle room, right? If you think 30% of people are going to use Shadow Rider, you don't have to predict the player. You just, you're going to go with those those odds there, you know? Ugh. All right. Do you have an answer? Uh, I do, unfortunately, because I have to stick with this answer. So when when we were in L.A., they asked us to, just like we did in Vancouver, they asked us to record hot takes for EUSE and then now for, for oh. NAIC, right? And so I was just being a silly guy, and I was like, what would be a silly hot take? Like, what would be a really fun hot take if I get it right? And so on the pre-show, I'm talking up Ice Rider. I'm talking up Shadow Rider. And, and Twitch chat says, Tarapagos is going to win. I'm like, that's a great answer, blah, blah, blah. And then we get to the hot take section. And I was like, get ready for Kyogre winning NASC. Like, because I just thought it would be cool to say it, that if Kyogre does win. So I don't think it's going to happen. But unfortunately, I do have to stick with my publicly stated hot take that Kyogre is going to win. All right. All right. Well, I just rolled a wheel of names okay. with the top eight restricted. Um, and it slowly, like, it almost landed on Zacian. Okay. And then it hit Cali Shadow. <laughs> but, Say your screen. No, just kidding. But <laughs> I think that is super uber boring. So I'm going to say Zacian. <laughs> Did Zacian get it? Wanna- Zashi getting that top eight first finish at the same time. You know what? We we ball, we ball. Um, I'm not I'm not putting Cali Shadow for all three. Like that is boring. Are you trying to win? Or are you trying to be boring? Like are like are you trying to be unique? You know what I mean? Sometimes there's not a, a plushie on the line. That is fair. That's fair. My own words used against me. I know, right? So oh. um. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be the person that says Kelly Shadow after criticizing everybody's caster predictions every single week for being boring. So you know, <laughs> we'll be a little unboring. That's fair. That's fair. All okay. right. Final question. Final NASC prediction, and arguably the most important prediction, which we have never technically gotten right. But if we get it out of a thousand players, we get it right this time. That would be pretty pretty big deal. Who is going to win NAIC? Ugh. Now I don't know if you're gonna answer your same, you know, person. I know we have our th- we have our three event cooldown usually, but there's only one event remaining in the year, you know. So this this is strategic. Because I'll say if you say Joe today, you can't say him at Worlds. I know that's why I'm not saying Joe today, and that's okay. why this is a pretty difficult one. Yeah, because I I was like, yo, if we we should have a reset. For Worlds, and then no, you said after no. After Worlds, you can yeah. if you want to do Joe for Worlds and. Then Joe for whatever the first regional after Worlds is, I'll allow that. Worlds can be our three break three event reset. You know what? Screw you. I'm picking Justin Burns. <laughs> my captain? Oh my god. My captain now. How about it's that? Like, you know what you just did? It's like, you know what? I hate you so much. Here's some free chocolate ice cream. Like it's just like in your face, your favorite player in this in this community is gonna win the event. Take that, Joe. <laughs> now you can't predict him. So if I'm right, you now like because we we never get these right, right, right? So like if I get this one right, I got the only time we've ever accurately predicted who won the event, but you can't player. Yeah. That's brutal. That's and hurtful. that's a betrayal because I won't like when we tell this story. I won't say because I picked first. We'll just be like, you know what? I believe and yeah. Joe Brown didn't. That's honestly tragic. Like you've let your captain down. I mean, you could. You definitely would join the fan club at that point if you correct. Pre- pre- we'll have to give you a title. I know. You know. Um, I'm president. Alex Underhill's VP. Uh, Jake is our uh, is our treasurer. And Rajan, Secretary of Defense. You know, we got a lot of attacks yeah. coming our way. So we'll we'll give you a title if you get this right in the oh, fan club. Goodness. But unfortunately for you, Sierra, you didn't have to worry about saying it first. Because if somebody watched the preview show for NAIC, you would have heard that my hot take was that Latin America will win NAIC. I think they're going to break through here. 
They, they are poised. I had numbers to back it up. They've had six special events so far in Latin America compared to two regions in America and then the one regional one special event in Europe. So they've had a lot of, if people have been able to go, which some of the players have gone to a lot of the special events, they have more reg G practice. And by player I'm picking is Juan Salerno from Argentina. He's, he was my, hey. <coughs> excuse me. He was my player to watch for the event. He won the Buenos Aires re, uh, special event. Argentina's best player, top 32 EUIC, two other top eights in Latin America, and uh, I'm going to lie to him. It's, it's honestly like, I feel like there's a lot of really strong players that you can put on this list. Um, even just looking at the fact that the last two international championships have been won by EU, like, I actually, if I... I was kind of thinking of picking an EU player because, like, th there's the possibility of the all three, but I think Justin Burns has just been really consistent this format. Um, yeah. So I think I have to I have to say him for that of that reason. But I no, think I'll Juan's definitely be bummed. Good call. I don't know about you, but I'll be bummed if Europe wins all three because we'll be like, man. Usually there's an NAE rivalry, but if they win all three, there's there's just no rivalry. I mean, EU adopted me. Um. <laughs> I went when I worked UIC, but also as the Canadian, it's like yeah. I can just play a little like ha ha because you know we yeah, had the France. same we had the same queen, you know. We're bonded for life that's, over that that's one. So much in common. There's so much in common, you know. But can't you right. like fly to England without any issues or something as a Canadian? I mean, I <laughs> haven't had issues. No, I, but isn't that like a thing that like you can just go to England like? I don't know, like maybe you still need a passport, but like you don't get as uh, scrutinized as a Canadian citizen compared to other countries because like Canada and England are like, you know. I don't know, maybe. Like, I, like I, didn't I, heard have, I didn't have any issues anytime I've gone to England, so. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I saw it on TikTok. I'm not a trust TikTok, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's our NASC predictions. Um, last thing to chat about before we get into the question of the week. Um, you referenced it a couple of times with the NASC preview show that you got to be a part of. How was it? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to spend too much time on it because it was a short little stint. I think I was on there for like 20 minutes. It was really cool. I watched the first USC one from home, and I'm like, oh, this is, this is fun. I hope this is a, something they continue to do. Um, I love that we had Celta there or Rachel. Uh, apparently, she had moved to Seattle recently, so it was like it was kind of just like a huge uh, Pokemon fan. So good fit, right? She's a huge Pokemon fan, and it also was like a just like a blessing that like oh, here's this professional you know uh, gaming host that lives in Seattle that we are hosting this event, you know. And Scarzig is also up there, Pacific Northwest. He did a great job as well. So I hope. For a long time, you know, if every I see every world that comes up, we have scars they can uh, and seltzer hosting and rotating the casters. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I did have to completely redesign my entire room uh, because I asked, I was like, hey, I kind of have like a Luffy poster and like Spider Man and like Final oh, Fantasy yeah, no. in the background. I was like, can we just like, can we just leave that alone? They're like, no, only Pokemon branding. Blah, 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 blah. So I was like, all right, fine. So I had to redo, redo my whole. Design, but it looks good. It looks fun. I got to put all my world's plushes out on the uh, behind me. So um, I had a lot of fun. I did a lot of research, like not just for my fun MBA <laughs> meme, which I did do research for that. But uh, what happened was I was actually exporting last week's episode of Oko, and it was just taking forever. So I was like, well, I'm going to be up for three hours now, waiting for this export, and then upload on YouTube, and yada, yada, yada. So that's where I broke out the Excel spreadsheet, like I said, in the uh, in the event to write down every starting point guard in the NBA and the college they went to, and their, this, the university's average GPA and their admissions rate and all this stuff, just because I needed time to kill because Oko was exporting. Uh, so if it wasn't for Oka, I wouldn't have had that fun tidbit, but also from the, uh, the person on Twitter that actually put that question, like, oh, we heard Stephen talk about Mewtwo. What about NBA players that could play Pokemon? So shout outs to them for suggesting and shout outs to Katie for actually, you know, go, like I sent it to her as like a kind of a bit, like just as a joke, like, wouldn't this be funny? Ha ha. And then she's like, oh, that's so funny. And then I was like, wait, can I actually give you a top five? And she was like, yeah, go for it. And then they handled the graphics and everything so I i'm honestly fun. very impressed with that like when i heard that like you got this segment to air that was a really big like 
yo, like we're getting to do like cooler, yeah. cooler things. Like that is that is cool. Yeah, as long as we didn't use any NBA images or player images, you know, that was the only thing. So that's why it was just a top five with the Still. things. But there was a lot of good social media response. I mean, the the Twitch chat was like really funny. I went back and watched Nevada as they were talking about it. Juancho had the great tweet. Um, it was good. Now, this is the one tough question we had at the end. You know, when they bring the group of all four games together and they ask like group questions. So the one question they had was the same as EUIC, but kind of different was which Pokemon across all four games is the most universally viable. And last time around, the caster said Sableye. And I was like, no shot. Is, is that the correct answer between TCG, VG, Unite and Go? Actually, uh, that's a really damn good answer. No, it's not. How is it not? Because Sableye it's, is used in Unite. Sableye, it, it, uh, um, I mean, used is the same way that say like Teemo is used in League of Legends. Like uh, Sableye is not used. Like whatever. I, it can be. It's also not good in VG. Like it, I know. Some shout out to Ryan, it. but you know, respect and, to Ryan. And, and shout out to Chance. So Lugia team with the Sableye. That's fair, right? It's like random stuff. But basically, we kind of cheated. I don't know if you think this is fair of us to cheat because it seems like Seltzer and, and Skarzik weren't ready for us. We said the Clefable and Clefairy line as a whole because some they're not all in all the games. So, for example, there's the Cleffa in the Charizard and all the other decks in TCG right now, the 30 HP, things like Draw or something or a Free Retreat. That's like a super good starter uh, starter card in many decks. Then there's Clefairy in VGC, who's super strong. Then Clefable in Ultra League in, Go in uh, Pokemon Go is a really strong Ultra League Pokemon. And then in Pokemon Unite, it's like a solid support Pokemon. It's not the greatest. It's not Blissey or it's not, you know, Poopa out there. But, like, it's it's definitely serviceable in Unite. Did y'all, like, get together beforehand being like, how can we cheese the heck out of this question? We did. We actually did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Uh... Kind of cheese, um, but like I think it's a pretty hard question just to kind of answer across the board. Yeah. Um, and I don't actually know enough in like of Go to really be able to say it. So I would, I would accept the cheese okay, personally good. this time. They were upset I would with say, us. Oh, um. Umbreon's not used in TCG, right? Because I was saying Umbreon would actually be like... That's not a bad... That's actually a pretty good... Wait, see, uh, they gotta put you on the next preview show. World's preview show. They gotta bring you on to support Umbreon. I... Yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a chart. <gasps> Wait, Umbreon's not good in TCG, but it's got like that like $8,000 TCG card or whatever. You ever see that one? He's like standing on top of a tower with like the moon stuff in the yes, background. Yes, it's a stunning art. But yeah. you can't be like, Sableye is not a valid answer as I got 17th <laughs> at uh, LA, even though it has been used in Unite. But you're like, yo, Umbreon, it's really expensive in TCG. That, I mean, know? there's value. There's value in that. Oh, we're arguing valued? All right. <laughs> any any Unite skin that costs over 50 bucks, there's your value. Yeah. I'm sure Sableye's got one of those. Yeah. that's a, Hey, it's all it's all about what you, uh, it's all about how you craft your argument, right? You could put any Pokemon in there and try to say it, right? Like, I don't know. Pikachu? Sure. You could throw Pikachu in there. I don't know. Sure. Sure. Anyway, I had a wonderful time <laughs> being a part of the preview show. I'm very happy I got to uh, do that, and I'm really happy that the basketball segment went it went as well in person in real life as it seemed in my head. So I'm happy that worked out. Let's go. Let's go. I, t I just chewed a piece of ice because I thought oh, you were trying to talk for longer. I'm not gonna lie. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'll continue. I'll up continue. To keep I'll continue to <laughs> to you. talk here. You know, like I tried to do some some of my Stephen A. Smith impressions. Like try to tag him. Hopefully, he would see the video, but he didn't. He didn't respond. He didn't to see it. it. Bang. He didn't respond. I like that. My answer. I know you don't like sports, but some of my answers were. I actually did do the research on their their school and their GPA and their you know their intelligence. I want intellect. I want you know team you leaders everything. out there, right? And so so like one, I said Jalen Brunson, who's the point guard for the New York Knicks, and I know you don't like sports, but 
the Knicks have been awful for 20 years, and now Jalen Brunson's their star player, and they're like a really good team now. So I was like, if Jalen Brunson could turn the Knicks organization around, surely he could click tailwind surging strikes. Like it's not that it's not that hard. Uh, and then for Luka Doncic, who's on the on the Dallas Mavericks to play in the NBA Finals. Uh, I said I put Luca on the list, and I was like, strictly because he's European. So all the other American players have to like they have to split up the NA coaches to get better at the game. But all of the EU team can help Luca, and like he could text Jamie Boyd for really good team pace. He can text Jamie yeah. Boyd. He, he could hit up David Kutesh and see like the new tech that that Kutesh is working on, and like all these NBA players aren't going to know, you know what what hit him. But my number one answer was Carl Anthony Towns, who plays for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And my answer was because he's from New Jersey. And New Jersey is like, it's title town in Pokemon. That's where all the world champions and IC champions and more regionals than you can count. So since Carl is from New Jersey, he's already got a leg up. He has the best local scene, local scene in the, in the whole game. There are some reasons on that list. That is for sure. <laughs> I still think my favorite is Sex Jamie Boy. Like these NBA players, just like. They're like, I got to call up a VGC player. I have good thing. I got Boyd's number. Believe in Boyd. Let's go. Exactly. They're, they're sad. They're sad. But uh, I don't, I also want to just like, I don't want to go back. Cause you're like, you don't like sports. I like sports. I, I just thought you like, did. I don't, no, I don't care for football uh, at all. I think football is super dumb. Um, <laughs> No, people enjoy what you enjoy. That's just like my personal opinion. Um, oh, well, then that's on care. me because I guess and I, I bring don't up, care for basketball either. Right. I guess I bring up football as the analogy often and you seem disinterested. So I guess I kind of extrapolated that. Well, you don't care about football. Therefore, she probably doesn't care about the other. I, like, um, I mean, I know like, you like um, hockey, you know? Yeah, I like hockey, um, like soccer, football, whichever way I like. I feel like it'd be really confusing to refer to it as football when I was talking yeah, about yeah, American yeah. football. Um, rugby, curling, like... Curling is lit. I'll give you curling. Curling is lit. Curling uh, is top tier. Yeah, I cover curling at the... I cut highlights for curling at the Olympics, and it was it was super, uh, super intense. Like It's, like, people that, like, don't understand how hype curling can be. You just need to have like a base understanding of the game. It's like watching TCG when you don't understand what's going on. Of course it's boring. Yeah. But like, as soon as you understand at a base level on why, what is happening is exciting. Oh my gosh. Is it ever exciting? Like it's actually like the greatest. Cause then you see it all transpiring as opposed to having to be told like what's happening. It's the same as TCG. Like if you don't like watching Pokemon TCG, just learn the game to just a, fundamental like basic level and it's a million times better like you you need to know it to to enjoy it yeah i love, I love the tcg curling analogy you know am i right <laughs> they start sh like they both shuffle right one with cards but one with like a stick thing they shuffle the ice you know oh, like sweet but yeah i don't know i think I, I think that's the verb i think that's i think it's called it's, shuffling it's, i don't know the sweepers Oh, okay, my bad. First, like they're sweeping. You know, it's all good. It, it's oh all no, good. It's team USA, baby. We're gonna we're good at curling. There's like this one dude. He's got a big. He's got a big. Uh, he's got a big mustache. He's like from Wisconsin or Minnesota I, I think, or something. Like, mustache and curling. You could be describing a lot of people. That's what I remember. <laughs> I remember team USA when they were playing. They were like, this dude was awesome. All right, we got a question of the week because we we're oh, just going right, into the weirdest sports. Um, sports. I'll bring Pokemon. up more curling analogies for you in the future. Sierra. The, like the more the weirdest like sports Pokemon TCG tangent that I don't think anyone expected from here. That's what they're here for, though. That's why they like Oko, You know. Fair, fair. All right, you got a question for us? Oh God, I did have it. It's full. It's on my phone. Give me a second. Uh... Well, you look, I can show everyone that my Apple Watch face is a Slitherwing. Whoa, that's crazy. Oh, 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 nice. Did you just do that? Uh, nope, it has been like this for months. It's been like a long okay. time. We did have a couple good questions this week, but I remember looking at it. I'm pulling it up on my phone. Um, now, this well, is right, this is unfortunate because oh. Leafy Arrow, he's got the three for three. We always try to not have you know the same person get three questions in a row, but nobody else did a good enough job of stopping Leafy Arrow. So our question of the week comes from Lee Fierro. We uh, It was asked last week, but we didn't choose it as the answer. But uh, what big things do you have planned, Pokemon or otherwise, during the offseason? Now, we do have literally over eight weeks after this week. So uh, we're going to have to come up with some fun podcast discussions over the next eight weeks. But what do you have planned for the next two months? 
So, at least for me, that even though it's a little bit of an off season for uh, Pokemon. <laughs> uh oh. Apologies, timing there. Um, yeah. Valorant is still going. Um, so I have been on. We just started our stage two. Um, we're already like two weeks in, so like um, Valorant's not going to go the deepest into the summer. I'll probably get like halfway, but um, I've been on every single day so far. It has been awesome. It has been a lot of fun. It's done a lot of work, and um, game changers and stuff is starting to. So I'll be busy with Valorant broadcast, which is always. It's nice sometimes to be able to focus on like the one game as opposed to like splitting time. Like I follow both anyways, even like as a fan. So it's fine. I can keep up, but it's really fun to like deep dive, nerd out, hyper focus, like the stupidest, craziest notes that like I wouldn't be able to do if I'm like splitting that like as much. And it's just, I don't know. It's a different level of hyper focus. That's like really fun to get into. So I'll probably be doing that. I'll be playing a lot of Valorant. I also am trying to just, like, be better about, like, my health and, like, stuff across the board. So, like, better working out, better mental health, and just kind of take time to really just be able to focus on myself in that way. And hopefully get back on YouTube as well. I kind of took a little bit of a mental health break, hence why I want the mental health to be better. But hopefully during summer, I'll be able to upload three times a week and just kind of throw a lot of energy into that. So that's a... my plans basically a lot of the same old same old but a little bit more time to get it dedicate towards it yeah you don't have to travel or anything so that's good um i mean it's good to have a, a rhythm so everybody will know you'll still be still be busy i think that was the main thing people were wondering what are we gonna do like yes we'll still have oko it's not like we're not gonna post <laughs> episodes just because there's no events we'll, we'll find fun conversations for everyone to enjoy uh but for me uh i think the first half of it, at least June and the first half of July is going to be a little more, a little more fu- fun or a little more free. Mainly, I'll be playing a lot of One Piece. Still, I go to I go to my local game store twice a week uh, to play One Piece, and we usually have like close to forty people turning out for for the weekly. So it's actually really good practice and like players that have played at regionals and done well at regionals and stuff for One Piece. So that'll be a lot of my preparation. There's a new set. Set seven comes out at the end of June, so I'll be putting a lot of practice into that new set. Uh, also, Street Fighter, they're starting their second season, and I've definitely dropped the ball from that Street Fighter event I went to back in the spring from my practice. So I got to get back on the grind and get my get my butt kicked by Akuma's online because he busted. Um, but then in July, so we'll, we'll cover it more when we get there, when it actually affects us. But I'll be working for. Uh, for the Summer Olympics, the way I, I for any of my friends knew, I, were, I was an editor for the Winter Olympics a couple of years ago for NBC, and I go into Stanford and uh, get to be like part of the building and work 12-hour days and cut highlights for all the Olympic events and stuff. It's a lot of fun. We'll cover it way more when we get closer to the event, but that is what my July and August plans <laughs> are, because uh, the Olympics literally go, I think the Olympics end, like, three days before Hawaii would begin, like, for the World Championship. Oh, they, did, they, they timed it, right? Yeah, they did Yeah, they did it on purpose, so. Uh, <laughs> so, well, we'll talk when we get there more, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to try to enjoy this next month before I leave for the <laughs> Olympics uh, a little more, because for that 25-day stretch, I kind of do nothing but work 12-hour days, so. I mean, that's fair. Like, highlights for something like the Olympics, and, like, you, I'm assuming you work across, like, multiple sports, too, right? Yeah, like, you're... Yeah. Every night you get assigned different things. Like, when I did the Winter Olympics, it was, uh, you know, I would do the big snowboarding event, and then after that, like, a, you know, ice skating thing, and then, like, a, you know, it's like, like, you'd have, like, four or five different things you'd cut throughout the, throughout the night. But I'm essentially living... Uh, off of French time, like I was off of Beijing time the last time around. So whenever I was asleep in America, that's when that's when I was working because that would be like nine, ten a.m. in Beijing. You know, at least the French time isn't the worst. Like, the it's Beijing not as time bad. is rough. Like that yeah. is. Like, in the summer, current... there's way more summer sports. I think it's three times the size the amount of summer Olympic medals and Olympic games compared to to winter. So there's going to be more to do. You know, baseball is there, basketball is there. You know gymnastics like all the all the fun stuff is in the summer olympics yeah i don't know like i haven't stayed tuned with what's happening to the olympics in a long time like way 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 back there was like one olympics that was held somewhere where they ended up like calling a bunch of like cats and stuff to like 
make it like okay for people coming and visiting and then i didn't watch it as like a protest and then <laughs> i i just kind of realized like oh i don't actually really care so then i never watched it going on forward so that's fair i, I don't know what's going on but uh but hopefully that'll be fun we'll t- we'll get more into that at then but um as for this episode um anything else to discuss uh Help us out in the Oko team discussion because we're kind of in a kind of at a crossroads right now with our our Lunala team. We just team. need to it's, make two you know, different Lunala teams at this point. I agree. I think. And let's just make two different teams. All right. Well, we'll we'll see what happens. We'll we could do two well, different things. We could do let's two. Let's have different our ideas. best of three open team sheet and our best of one closed team <laughs> sheet, and it will all be fine and dandy. Anyway, if you want to help us in the Oko uh, Discord, we're building a team and we're going to release the rental code and hopefully people, you know, use it online for fun events or something like that. So that's our, our top priority right now in the Oko Discord. If you haven't joined anyway, we post a lot of, uh, we have some of our members post memes that are really funny. Uh, Sierra and I were actually a meme this week <laughs> from, from Alex oh, on the yeah. Twitter. Uh, so people got some good jokes in there. But yeah, so just shout out the Discord. That's all I got. Yeah, question of the week, the discussion. If you don't actually let Leafy get like... a fourth one in a row, come on, people, get it together oh, next week. Goodness. And then, yeah, even just team building, um, playing the game, things like the BBQs. He actually called the BBQs at a barbecue, but uh, yeah, the BBQs, other stuff. Um, you can all ask there. But uh, if you made it to this point in the episode, thank you so much for tuning in again. If you are traveling to NASC, best travel, safe travels, and best of luck at the tournament. If you're at home, hopefully, you enjoy watching. Shameless plug come by watch the watch party i will be streaming all of it because i already signed up to do it and i can't back out now <laughs> no it'll be a lot of it'll be a lot of fun though um i hope everyone else enjoys whatever they're doing on with their day their night whatever and we'll see you next week um until then stay safe